Welcome to our review on exchange and transport. So the first thing we really need to know about here is this term that comes up quite a lot in biology, which is surface area to volume ratio. Now there's two ways it might be written. It could be written as we can see at the start there with the full words, or it could be written kind of like the ratios you see in maths with a little colon between the two. Now what we're actually referring to when we talk about the surface area to volume ratio is the surface area per unit volume of an object. So if we think back to our math lessons with those nice simple shapes that we've used like a dice, then to calculate the surface area of that dice, you do the length times the width of one of the faces and then times that by however many faces there were, which in a dice is obviously six. If you wanted to work out the volume of that same dice, it's the length times the width times the depth. So just make sure you do know how to do that because they could very well give you little cubes and ask you to work out surface area to volume ratio. So you'd have to work out the surface area first of all, then you'd have to work out the volume and then obviously you can use those to put into the ratio format and you can simplify those down to obviously give you the simplest terms. Now in terms of where this is actually important, then I've given you a delightfully zoomed in image there of a tapeworm. So this is what you're going to get creeping around inside your intestines if you eat raw bacon or if you eat undercooked pork, there's a really high chance you could get one of these. Now tapeworms have this really large surface area to volume ratio and the whole reason behind that is so that the diffusion distances are small so that that means it can actually absorb all the nutrients it needs from your intestine in a short enough space of time to keep it alive. What we find as we go to larger organisms is that your surface area to volume ratio then becomes much lower. So the bigger the organism, the lower the surface area to volume ratio will be. So what that actually tells us is that there's a limit to how big organisms can actually get and rely on diffusion to actually get all the substances that they need. Because when we go beyond a certain size, that surface area to volume ratio becomes too low and diffusion is too slow to provide everything that they need. So in order to overcome that problem in our multicellular organisms, then we've developed these different adaptations, which have been solely designed to increase the surface area to volume ratio at any of those key exchange surfaces like the lungs and the intestines. If we consider the lungs, first of all, then what we find at the very, very end of all those tubes, they've got smaller and smaller and smaller, are these structures called the alveoli. Now you can see a little picture in the top left there. And what we have as the whole purpose behind those alveoli being present in our lungs is something that's going to increase the surface area. So that means we've got this huge surface area for which gases can then be exchanged between the blood and the lungs. The second example we can look at is inside the intestine. Now what we find there is that we've got all these folds within the small intestine which are called villi. Now, the whole purpose behind those once more is to increase the surface area and to actually make that an even greater surface area on top of those villi or even further folds called microvilli, which make it an absolutely massive surface area. So once we actually have these substances diffused into the body, then they need to actually be transported to the different regions that actually need them. Now, if we think about animals, then we've got the circulatory system, which does this for us. So the heart and the blood vessels with the blood there. Plants also have their own little transport system, which is actually using two types of tissue, which we're going to look at a little bit later in this topic, which are xylem, which are the ones that are going to transport water and dissolve minerals, and the phloem, which are the ones that will be transporting the sugars and the amino acids. So throughout the plant, you've got those two types of tubes that transport all of the bits the plant needs to all the different regions.